This is Peach from Great Lakes Makes, and today I'm going to show you how to design and make these 3D printed threaded knobs using Fusion 360. I picked up some quarter 20 hex bolts from my local hardware store. The first step was to measure the width and height of the hex as well as the diameter of the bolt shaft. Jumping into Fusion 360, create a new component. For this part I'm going to change the units from millimeters to inches since I'm using standard hardware. Create a new sketch on any of the planes. I want this part to be round, but also taper down to have a circular cross section where it clamps on the surface. So create a five-sided figure. Remember when you're using Revolve, the dimensions you enter are the radius, not the diameter. So 0.75 at the top gives us an inch and a half knob. Finally, taper the part at 135 degrees, and that'll let us print without using any support material. Stop the sketch and click on Revolve, and pick your sketch, and use the center axis to revolve around and create your solid body. The next step is to create a pocket on the top surface to accept the head of the bolt. So create another sketch and use the polygon tool to create a hexagon. Enter a distance between the flats that's just slightly larger than the head of the bolt that you measured in the beginning. That'll give some space for the epoxy to fill in. Whenever a sketch is blue, that means it's not fully constrained. So pick one of the vertical edges and use the vertical horizontal constraint to lock it down. Next, we extrude that into the part. To cut away a pocket, make sure that you enter a dimension that's big enough to cover both the head of the bolt and the nut, in my case, 0.22 inches. The last modification is to cut a through hole for the bolt threads, so create another sketch on the bottom and draw a circle, enter a dimension that's bigger than the threads you measured in the beginning, in my case 0.26 inches. Exit the sketch and you can extrude that to cut it away. Either enter a dimension or use the through all function to go through the entire thickness of the knob. The last step is to cut some pockets away on the outside of the cylinder so that we have some space for your fingers and thumb to grab on. So create another sketch on the bottom surface, draw a circle. We're going to set that tangent to that bottom clamping surface so that we keep that circular cross section. So pick the sketch and pick the surface, use the tangent tool to make them tangent. Enter a dimension, in my case I use 3 inches. Again, since that sketch is blue, you see it snap out of the way. So pick the center of the circle and the origin and use the vertical horizontal constraint to lock it down. The last thing that we do is under sketch, click circular pattern and pick your sketch circle and use the origin as the center point. I entered three, that'll give us a triangular sort of cam shaped knob. I think it looks kind of cool. Exit the sketch and use the extrude function to cut away the outside of the knob. Again, you can enter a dimension or you can use the through all function to make sure that you cover the entire thickness of the knob. Take a look that you're happy with everything. I like to make the, the cutouts line up with the flats on the nut and add some fillets around the outside edges. Not only do these make it smoother to the touch, I think they also improve the quality of the print. When you're finished, Click File and Export out to your 3D printer. In my case, I'm using slicing software called Cura. Sometimes parts import into Cura in less than ideal orientation, so rotate it around so it's sitting flat on the build plate. If you want to print multiples, now is your time to add those additional parts. As far as layer height, I'm using a thickness of a little over 0.21 millimeters and a fill density of 80%, much more than you would use for an ordinary part. When you're happy with your print time, click Export to SD. I picked up some 5 minute epoxy at the hardware store when I bought the nuts and bolts. I used a little bit of blue painter's tape on my work surface so the epoxy doesn't stick to anything important. Now I could have stopped filming here because I made a little bit of a mistake, but make sure that whenever you buy a new bottle of epoxy, cut the tip off. And if you're recording a video, maybe it's best to try it first and take the foil off the inside of the bottle too. With that out of the way, this is a 50-50 epoxy, so mix equal parts of part A and part B. I used a popsicle stick here to mix it together. Once everything is mixed, put a little epoxy on all six sides of the bolt and slide it into the pocket on the 3D printed part. You'll want to leave these somewhere where it can dry with the hole facing up so the epoxy doesn't run. Once the epoxy is cured, thread them together and do a little test fit and you're good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video and found something useful. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you print your own or have something you'd like to see me design and make, mention it in the comments below. I'd love to read it.